slip your hands up in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to ask you if you can stand. If you can, it's all right. But if you can, and lift those hands up in the presence of the Lord. Flowing from my heart. Come on, come on. Everybody say that. Oh, flowing, flowing from my heart. Open your mouth and sing it. Flowing, oh, flowing from my, from my heart. Come on, lift your hands and say it. Just say it until you feel it. Flowing, flowing from my heart. Come on, just one more time. Sing it loud. Flowing, flowing, flowing from my heart are the issues come on are the issues of my heart is gratefulness <laughs> my God <laughs> come on come on and I'm all shake hallelujah Come on, come on. Gratefulness. Gratefulness. I don't hear your church. Gratefulness. Gratefulness. Hallelujah. Grateful. 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 Hallelujah. 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 If you only knew my story. <laughs> if you only knew my story. You would understand my praise. was the nail in the coffin it was one thing for you to say eh, I don't think God could use a woman but it's another thing for you to say God's, God said it and you try to use scripture to make your point and so you are called but you're confused because it can't be that I am actually going to be able to preach the gospel because I am a girl. If you knew my story, if you knew how I got to this place tonight, hallelujah. If you knew how I got to St. Paul in 1983, if you knew how I got to five continents of the world, over 40 nations of the world preaching the gospel. If you knew, you would understand 
Well, I'm grateful. That is what a sermonic song is supposed to do. It's supposed to set the atmosphere. And I want to thank God for y'all. Thank God. Thank you. If you knew my story of how I ran after the Holy Ghost. Because I grew up in a denomination that discounted and disregarded the Holy Spirit. But I got exposed through my music ministry and I heard people speaking in tongues. I saw people get healed. And I went and I asked my pastor at the time, Reverend Charlie Johnson, the pastor of the Green Grove Missionary Baptist Church number two. I said, what about these miracles? What about this? What about tongues? And he looked at me and said, that's not for today. If you knew my story. Imagine the irony of a little girl being raised up to not know the Holy Spirit. Raised up to ignore Holy Spirit. Raised up to discount and discredit the Holy Ghost. And now to pastor a church called the Holy Ghost Missionary Baptist Church. Flowing from my heart. If you only knew my story, are the issues. If you knew my story, for approximately 20 years, I chased the Holy Spirit. I went everywhere I could that Holy Spirit was, was moving. I went to the Church of God in Christ. I, I went to the Pentecostal Church, the Apostolic Church. I was so thirsty to know who is this Holy Spirit that my church has denied me. And when I would read the Bible and I would see that it was in there, from the beginning, Genesis to the end, Revelations. I needed to know why. Aren't you telling me and teaching me about the Holy Ghost? Why are you keeping him a secret from me? Don't I need it? Don't I need the Holy Ghost? My pastor said, well, you know, when you got saved, the Holy Spirit came on the inside. I said, that, that's good. I got that. But there's something else. There's something else. And why aren't you telling me? And he looked at me. He said, little Coletta, I don't know the answer to that. He said, but I was taught that it's not for today. So that's what I teach. I said, but what? I'm 11 years old. And I said, but what if you're wrong? And I began to search. I began to look. I began to knock on doors. Anybody that talked about the Holy Spirit, I said, could you tell me? Could, could, you, could, you, could, you, could you just show me in the scripture? How can, I, how can I receive this spirit baptism? What is this? And they began to tell me and each person would tell me more one of my patients he said you got to be baptized in Jesus name I said well I'm already baptized but if that's what it'll take take me to the water and on my lunch break I went to a church with him an apostolic church that kept water in the pool and he baptized me in the name of Jesus at this point I was desperate I was desperate I didn't want to live my life with just Jesus. I was desperate. And I was singing in this choir, the Wayne Oakland Community Choir. And there was a group of women that their pastor had told them they couldn't teach at church 
but they can start a Bible study in their home, Mother Woodard. And these five women started this Bible study. And it met on a Tuesday night. And somebody told me about it. And said they're moving in the gifts of the spirit. They're speaking in tongues. And they're prophesying. I said, where is it? And they told me where it was. And I went. I took my little family with me. And I kept going. I kept going. And one night my, my father said to me, I think you're in a cult. I said, Daddy, I don't think this is a cult. Why don't you come? He said, all right, me and your mama are going to come. I'm a young woman. I'm married with two little children. My youngest child was laying on my lap, and my oldest child was sitting next to me and her father. And that night. Wow. You knew my story. Young woman got up, and she began to prophesy. And she said, tonight, I'm going to pour out my spirit. <laughs> and anyone that wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost, tonight is your night. So just start praising the Lord. And in the Baptist church, you know, we shout it. You know, you shout and get stiff and go out. So I didn't really know what praise was. And the usher come with smelling salt. Y'all know, come on. You Methodists do the same thing. Y'all know, y'all copied us and we copied y'all. The lady was sitting behind me. My mother was sitting to the right behind me because the place was jam-packed. Down in the basement, about... 50 chairs and it was 75 people there for sure and my father was sitting over to the left what's this to my left no this is my right behind me and my mother was sitting to the left of me behind me but there was a lady directly behind me and she began to say hallelujah glory to God hallelujah I said well I'm gonna do what she do So I started saying hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And she started speaking in tongues and I was like, don't give her all of it. She was just speaking, just, just speaking, just speaking. And I, 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 got, I said, Lord, please don't, don't let her get all of it. And don't forget me. Now you got to remember my father is a Baptist pastor. My mother, she's a little bit more open. But that night they were there. And I don't know when it jumped from her to me. Hallelujah. I don't know. If you knew my story. You started singing that song. I said, God, that's, that's my anthem. People see me now, but they don't know. I'm so grateful. And I don't know when it transferred. But that, that little basement went up in fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And about two and a half hours later, they tapped me on my shoulder. They said, you got it. You got it. And when I came to myself, I was speaking so fluently. And nobody laid hands on me. But I had been chasing it for years. I knew it was real. I couldn't explain it. I didn't have the theology for it. But I knew it was real. And I knew I needed it. They ended up carrying me out. Because I couldn't stop. I got home. I was speaking. They had to undress me. My mom had to undress me. I couldn't go to sleep. I spoke all night. 
The next morning, I couldn't go to work. My mother called on the phone. I answered the phone. She said, I'm on my way because you can't go to work today like that. She came in. I got to come see about you. All that day, and it wasn't no baby tongues. They were, they were solid, mature tongues. All that day, all that night, three days and three nights before I could speak a word of English. Play that song one more time, flowing from my heart. Flowing from my heart. Y'all don't understand. Are the issues of my heart? You see, when you come up and they take it from you, when you grow up in church and they deny you, and they ostracize you and kick you to the curb, they keep the vital information from you. God would have it so that you stumble upon it. Y'all ain't saying that there. I said God would have it so that you would stumble upon it. Because you, you wanted it, you desired it, and you knew you needed it. And that was 1974. I believe that's about 49 years ago. Almost 50 years of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, I didn't just get to this party. I didn't just get here. Come on, somebody. I, I, I've been here a while. And I had to work through it. I had to learn. I, I had to study. I, I had to get around mentors. But it started with my desire it didn't start with teaching because they didn't teach it it didn't start with exposure because I wasn't exposed it started with a desire hallelujah if you knew my story come on flowing from my heart Come on, lift your hands and say that again. Flowing from my heart. Flowing. Flowing from. From my heart. Come on, lift those hands. Yes. Flowing from my heart. Yes. Hey, hey, shut Yeah, come on, do it one more time. the issues come on all the issues oh God oh my God I'm so grateful what is it his gratefulness oh God oh y'all don't understand if you understood you would clap better than that if you understood, you'd already be standing on your feet. If you understood what God has done for me and what God is waiting to do for you, you would be rejoicing because as it was for me, so shall it be for you. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 
Pour out your spirit, God. Oh, God. I remember sitting in services where people were speaking in tongues and I couldn't speak. And I said, Lord, I don't know how they do it, but I sure want it. I don't know what all that is, but I need that. And I would go to service. I wouldn't stay away because I, 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 was, I, was, I was nosy. It had nothing to do with spirituality. I was just nosy. I wanted to know how, how they do that. How they speaking in tongues like that? What is that? And I'd be sitting on the organ and sometimes I'd be playing, you know, little moonlighting gigs. And they'd be in there just speaking. And you know, the old mother would quicken like that. Y'all don't know nothing about none of that. Hey! 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 Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Hey! Hey! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! My soul says yes! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Shetotaya! You know they would make up songs. You know them songs when they know hymn book. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. He'll come and pour out. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. He'll come and pour out. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. He'll come and pour out. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. He'll come. Oh, put a demand on the Holy Ghost. He'll come. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I said, that ain't no song. Hey, try it, try it. Well, put a demand on the Holy Ghost. He'll come. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. Good. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. Ah, put a demand on the Holy Ghost. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. Hey. Put a demand on the Holy Ghost. Come on, clap.
it demand. Hey, put it demand. Put it demand. God is in this place. Hey, God. Just touch yourself and say, I'm going to put a demand on the Holy Ghost. And he will come. Say it out loud. He will come and pour out. I didn't get like this because of my loyalty to my denomination. When God began to pour out his spirit in that upper room, there were no denominations. If I had been theologically loyal to my Baptist doctrine, it wouldn't be me standing here tonight. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. We have to realize that God has treasures beyond our loyalties, beyond our liturgies, beyond our traditions, that God has treasures beyond all of the stuff they taught us in school. And all of the things that they tell us every Sunday. That God has treasures. Beyond. And we have to be unafraid. To go beyond. Our traditions. We have to be willing. To go beyond the camp that we have been born in, raised in, trained in. Because your camp is not the whole body. Your camp is just all you know. But your camp or your particular tradition is not the whole body of Christ. I believe that God wants the church, the true church, his church, to begin to comprehend with other saints. What is the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of the love of God? How, how, how can we find all of these pieces of God if we are denominationally loyal God is not Pentecostal God is spirit God is not Methodist God is spirit I'm talking good God is not Baptist God is spirit and he is seeking for those to worship him in spirit and truth. He don't give a deadly squat about our denominations. Do you know me by my spirit? We are so loyal to our infrastructures that we will walk in blindness if sight is somewhere else. I missed that. You missed that. I said you'd rather walk in blindness because sight is beyond your denomination. So I'll just put on some fancy sunshades and cover up the fact that I can't see because sight is in another reformation. I can't find what I need from God in my camp. I'll 
just go without it. Because the bishop might have a problem. Or the pastor might get mad. But what I need may be in another part of the body. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. I'm going somewhere. You better go with me. Hallelujah. So if, if I'm crippled, I'll just stay crippled. If I'm blind, I'll just stay blind. If I'm deficit in the spirit, rather than to go and get it from another part of the body, I'll just stay denominationally loyal and blind. And then what that does is that teaches us how to be divided. It teaches us how to act snooty and superior. We got social justice. This group over here say, we, we got faith. Another group say, we got the gifts of the spirit. Another group say, we got the cross and the resurrection. And so what happens is the devil uses all of our specialties. In, instead of uniting us, dividing us. And so we would rather stay loyal to our camp. <laughs> than to get the full gospel. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. Paul talks to us out of the epistle of Ephesians around the third chapter and he talks about how he wants us to be able to know the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of God. You have your Bibles, you can go there if you want to, we can read it, but I'm almost finished. But just for those of you that are seminary trained, and you got to have a text. <laughs> Look at this for just a moment, are you there? It says in 14 of 3 of Ephesians, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in whom, verse 15, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in your inner man. Mark that, mark that verse in your, in your Bibles. And you would be strengthened with might through his spirit in your inner man. That Christ, the anointing, the, the anointed, the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you would be rooted and grounded in love. That you, verse 18, Mark, and that's where we're headed, that you would be able to comprehend with all saints. Somebody say all. all. Say it again loud. All. all. With all saints, what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height? Paul is talking to us, Bishop, about some stuff here. That, that, that no one group has it all. Dr. Lewis said that, that, that there, there is specialties given to distinct parts of the body. My leg does not do what my nose does. Okay, y'all not saying nothing. My, 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 my hands does not do what my brain does. Hey, Angie, that, that, that listen to me, that, that just as my body has many members, so his body has many members. But it is his intent, somebody say his intent, is 
that the whole body, say the whole body, would be fitly joined together. That we would comprehend with each other. You have the width. You have the depth. You have the height. You have the length. But if we could learn to respect and honor without being critical, without being judgmental, without being suspicious, without us, without us feeling some kind of way when someone has a grace on them that we don't have. Instead of learning, instead of saying, teach me what you know. G- give me what you know. And I'll share with you what I, instead of us comprehending with one another what we each are good at, we fight each other. We push each other away. We discard what you have. We disrespect what you have. We dishonor what you have. Because it ain't what my camp has. But God's plan is that we would comprehend the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of God. Because God is so much bigger than any of our denominations. Somebody ought to praise God right there. Just clap your hands and praise God. I said, clap your hands. I said, clap your hands and praise God. In business, they call it networking. We network. But in the church. In, in business, we network. We collaborate. come together and form partnerships in politics you have packs we don't always have to agree but we are going to put our investment in this candidate for this election that's a pack business we network we come together we collaborate we brainstorm we teamwork for a more profitable outcome not in the body. That's why the body is unbalanced. That's why the body is out of sync. The body is not operating as a body. One kneecap is trying to be the whole body. One eyeball is trying to be the whole body. One elbow is trying to be the whole body. No, 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 no. No, that's not what he, what he promised. That's not what he intended. He wanted us to be able to comprehend. I'm back in verse 18. I need you to underline that. To comprehend with all the saints. It's all the saints you don't like. That's all the saints you don't agree with. Ain't your color. Don't believe exactly like you believe. But to be able to comprehend, perceive what God has done for them. And value that. It doesn't have to be your experience. But value theirs. What is the width. Of God. What is the length. What is the depth. And the height of God. That's that's deep stuff. That we would be able to comprehend with all saints the full measure of God. In other words, I will never have the full measure of God if I don't comprehend with saints outside of my reformation. I'll never know the fullness of God. I'll never know the fullness of God if I don't comprehend with other saints and glean and receive and accept 
what it is that God is doing in their mix, then I can mix it in with what God is doing with me. That's why we're so unbalanced. That's why we're still running into people who have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because we have been taught that Pentecostalism is too radical. It's too extreme. All them tongues. All that stuff, you know that ain't true. How they know that? That prophecy, that ain't real. Come on, talk back to me. You know, come on. That ain't real. That, that's witchcraft. Ain't no apostles today. Ain't no real prophets today. Come on now. See, you're trying to tap into something that you don't fully believe. Because you've been taught not to believe. And what we're trying to do is get you to believe again. But you've been taught that some of that ain't God. Oh, come on. No. You ain't got to say nothing to me. You've been taught. You've been taught across the sacred desk. That tongues are not for today. Healing is not for today. Miracles are not for today. There are no apostles. I went straight through school, seminary. They told me there were no apostles. I, I raised my hand. I said, that can't be true. They said, what you mean? I said, because I am one. <laughs> have you seen the risen Christ? I said, indeed, I have. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, 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 how do you support it with scripture? I said, let me tell you something. 1977, I was dying with cancer. I began hemorrhaging and they rushed me to the hospital. When I got to the hospital, I was hemorrhaging so bad the blood was pooled. They couldn't even wait. My family couldn't wait for the emergency truck. They had to take me and pull me in the car. And when the security pulled me out of the car, blood was all at the bottom of the, of the car, of the floor. They put me on a gurney and rushed me in the back. I'm hemorrhaging literally to death. I'd been in the hospital several weeks before. I'd had major surgery, had all kinds of tests, and they couldn't find what was going on. I got back there, and of course, having been a nurse at that point, they started to triage me. My blood pressure was 60 over 40. Trust me when I tell you, if you knew what I'd been through. And when I got back there, I was on the gurney next to the wall. The nurse was had the blood pressure cuff on this arm. Never will forget it. Young white girl. And she was trying to take my blood pressure. And the doctor was down below and he was saying, I don't know why she's bleeding. I don't know why she's hemorrhaging. They brought the chart. One digital then. They brought the chart and saw that I had just had surgery. He said, what? what is going on? Is there a suture? What is going on? They couldn't figure it out. And I could hear the nurse pumping that blood pressure cuff because they couldn't get my blood pressure. I heard the doctor say, we're losing her. I don't know why this girl is too young to die. And right about that time, I turned my face to the wall and a tunnel appeared. And as I was going through this tunnel, it was extremely cold. I was fully cognizant and fully aware. And I heard the nurse say, we're losing her. I can't get up blood pressure. So I'm going through this tunnel. And it's extremely cold. I'm so cold. And all of a sudden, almost like these TV lights, but five million times bigger and brighter. This bright light. And I'm walking into this light. I have my I'm fully cognizant of myself. I'm fully cognizant of where I am. And the light is so bright that I began to warm up. And out of the light came a hand that said, stop. Where are you going? I saw no face, saw no voice, no mouth, but I heard the voice. And I'm walking into it. And I said, I'm coming home. And the voice from the light said, go back. We are not ready for you here yet. I looked up in the hand and there was a big hole. Go back. For I have called you as an apostle to my people. 
Go, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils, and deliver my people from religious bondage. Now go back. I bowed and I saw two feet and both feet had holes. I began to go backwards. I never turned away from the light. And when I came back, I could hear the blood pressure. But it was three days later. I know I'm an apostle. If you knew what I had been through, you'll understand why that song was exactly precise for tonight. Flowing from my heart. The teacher said, well, I, I can't doubt any of that. And I, I believe you. I said, don't say it no more in this class. Because it's not true. And you're teaching these people wrong. I said, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are God's plan to perfect the saints. Not bishops, not elders, not deacons. Apostles, prophets, Evangelists, pastors, and teachers, the length, the breadth, the depth, the height for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of the ministry until we come into the unity of the faith and the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. That's why the church has gone wild. If we embrace what Paul said, we wouldn't be this crazy. We wouldn't be running for the bishopric because the bishopric is not an election. We wouldn't seek the highest offices if there's nothing else. So we wouldn't be cutthroating and killing each other and lying on each other and backstabbing each other because ain't nothing at stake. There's nothing at stake. This is why believers are immature. This is why believers are immature because we have reckoned the church to one office, pastor. So that's the only way you can move in ministry is if we make you a pastor, but I'm not a pastor, I'm an evangelist. I told that lady, where's that presiding elder? Stand up, mother. God said, that's an apostle. I read your card tonight. Thank you for the seed and thank you for the testimony. It is my desire to pour into you. But you're already great. Even if I never had met you, you're already great. May God open up countries and nations for you. 23, 24, 25. That he would put your name on the wind. Signs and wonders. Miracles and healing flow from you we have made people uncomfortable because we only have one track for them to serve in the ministry I said it and that's why so many of you are, are unproductive because you're not a pastor you don't want to go to seminary you just want to heal the sick. So you have to go outside of your reformation. And you have to go into another part of the body. 
and be able to receive the mentoring that you need. Don't sit on your gift any longer. Some of you have been able to hear prophecy since you were a child. You have been able to see things before it happened. But because there is no track for profit, you don't believe that you should tell anybody what you are seeing. But tonight, I release you. That you will be getting, some of you have had dreams and visions since you were a child. And your dreams come to pass. Who am I talking to? But nobody around you in your reformation understands the prophetic. So you got to go outside of your denomination to find prophetic training. It don't mean you're crazy. It just means it's not in your part of the body. But it is in the body. Lift your hands. God is releasing his gifts to his people. God is releasing his gifts to his people. Listen to this. Look at your Bible. To know the love of Christ. Verse 19. Which passes knowledge. I want you to underline this. The love of Christ. Which passes knowledge. And that you might be filled. With all. Of the fullness of God. If that don't make you fall out. You need to be saved. You mean to tell me that I can be filled with all of the fullness of God? Wait a minute. Okay, let me go on this side. Let me go on this side because that side over there, they ain't, they ain't working with me. This side over here, y'all, y'all, y'all with me. You mean to tell me that I can be filled with all the fullness of God. Preacher, is that what you're saying to me? Is that what you're saying to me? That I, a little Methodist woman, a little Methodist man, a little Baptist girl can be filled with all of the fullness of God. Why would, why would I not embrace that? Why would I not embrace the fullness of God? Because I've been taught against it. It's the subtleness of the devil to quench the spirit. So be saved, but keep struggling. Be saved and be dirty. Be saved and keep gambling. Be saved and keep fornicating. Be saved and don't know your, your proper orientation. Be saved and lie. Be saved and cuss. Be saved and smoke. Be saved and get drunk. Be saved and walk in bitterness. Be saved and walk in unforgiveness. Because I've never been told that I can be filled with the fullness of God. I've been in my denomination all my life. They ain't never told me this. That's why he said you have to go outside. You have to go beyond. You cannot let loyalty keep you dumb. You cannot let loyalty keep you broke, keep you weak, keep you ignorant. But you have to want it. Run over to Ephesians chapter number five. We're almost done. Come on. Are you here with me? I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go.
But let me go back to Mark. I just hear the Holy Spirit say, go back to Mark. Chapter 16. Mark chapter number 16. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I want it all. Somebody had to, somebody had to name this tonight. That's what we're going to call it. Lord, I want it all. I want it all. I ain't too old and I ain't too young. And it ain't too late. I don't care. I don't care. I want it all. If I go home to be with the Lord next week, tonight I want it all. I want it all. See, see, I wanted it. Some of y'all don't want it, but I'm trying to stir it up in you. I'm trying to cook it so you can smell it. <laughs> I, 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 want you to, I want you to feel like you want it all. Come on. I, I want you to feel like if you could just get a bowl of it. If I, if I could get a taste. If I can, can I get, my mama used to make cakes and she would have a taste cake. Yeah, a test cake. Y'all don't know nothing about that. And she would make the cake and then she put it in a, a, in, under the brawl, a little thing. And, and she put it under the brawl and see I'm old school. And she would say, this is my test. And y'all come in and see if this cake is good. I'm just trying to see if you want it. Do, do y'all want it? Y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want it. Y'all yeah. Y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want it. Y'all don't want it. You ain't, you ain't acting like you want it. See, I be running in crazy. I be standing up on top of the pew. I be turning around. I be jumping up. Y'all too dignified for me. Y'all don't want it. You ain't hungry. You ain't thirsty. Hey, glory to God. Do you want it? Do you don't? Do you want it? Do you know? Do you know you need it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you want the fullness of God? Do you want the fullness of God? Yeah. I want it all. I want, I, I want it all. I want the grace of Jesus. I want the love of God. And I want the communion of the Holy Ghost. I want it all. I want it all. I, I ain't thinking about y'all. I'm going to go with the choir. They with me. Come on here. I want it all. <laughs> Forget them. I want it all. Y'all want it all? I want it all. I want the love of God. I want the grace of Jesus. And I want the communion of the Holy Ghost. I want it all. The fullness of God. Just gonna read this. And these signs will follow them that believe. I want it all in my name. You will cast out demons. You will speak in new tongues. You preachers done lied to these folk long enough. Oh, that's just, that's just, if you was lying, you ain't lying no more. That's not what that's about. Faulty hermeneutics. But you can't preach what you haven't experienced. Make it hard on you, don't it? I said, make it hard on you. For you to talk about speaking in tongues and you don't speak in tongues. Make it hard for a preacher, don't it? It is hard out here for a preacher. So you gotta, you gotta dance it up. <laughs> that, that, don't, that don't mean speaking in tongues. That mean, that mean, that mean, if you was a liar, you ain't lying no more. <laughs> you lying preacher. But it's hard for you to take them where you haven't gone. So you gotta doctrine it up and confuse the people. Jesus told us we would speak in tongues. These signs would follow them that believe in my name. You will cast out devils. You will speak in new tongues. Oh, hallelujah. You will take up any serpent and if it poisons you, you won't die. And you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus told us that we are to cast out devils. Jesus told us that we are to speak in tongues. 
Jesus told us that we are not to be afraid of demons and witches and warlocks. Jesus told us to heal the sick. That's what he told us. And it may not be in your reformation, but it's in the plan of God. Lift your hands in his presence and say, I want it all. Open your mouth and say it. I want it all. Mean it when you say it. I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. Say it loud. I want it all. Oh, oh, glory to God. I want every bit of it. Everything that God has prepared for me. I want it all. I want all of the treasures. I want all of the revelation. I want all of the power. I want all of the Holy Ghost. I want all of the gifts. I want the word of knowledge. The word of wisdom. Prophecy. Tongues. Interpretation of tongues. The gift of faith. Healing and miracles. I want it all. I want it all. The fullness of God. I want it all. And I don't care if I'm Baptist or Methodist or Pentecostal. I don't care if I'm non-denominational. I don't care if I'm Presbyterian or Lutheran. I don't care. Jesus said, I can heal the sick. I can cast out devils. Jesus said, I will speak in new tongues. Jesus said, that's what he wants for you. Not just to be saved and go to heaven, but to make an impact. Lift your hands. Stand on your feet. Long out of days, well, you got to preach with an organ. It's time to see the demonstration of the Spirit's power. Paul said, I could have come to you with a whole lot of rhetoric. I could have come to you with all of the knowledge that I learned at the feet of Gamaliel. I could have come to you and repeated the things that I learned from Ananias on Straight Street. But I didn't. I didn't come like that. I'm well able. I'm qualified. I got all of the degrees of Judaism. I am who I am. I, I am the tribe of Benjamin. A Pharisee keeping the law better than anybody. I could have came to you like that. But I didn't. I came to you in a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Why? So that your faith would not be in the wisdom of man, but in the wisdom of God. That's why we don't believe in God no more. Because preachers act like they're God. And I'm a preacher, and I'm talking about us. They want you to have confidence in them and not in God. I would never withhold information from my congregation if I didn't have it. I would go get it. If I saw that I was coming up short in an area, I would not withhold that from my congregation. I would go get it. We were putting up curtains in the house the other day. My grandson and folks, my son-in-law, and they said, I got to go get a bit, my drill. I need a bit for this. I don't know what that is. But he stopped what he was doing. He said, Ma, I'll be right back. He came back with a bit. It was a little bitty thing. He had a drill. But he didn't have a right size bit to do the job. If I knew that I was missing something, I would go get it. I wouldn't keep telling folk it don't exist. I would not keep telling people it ain't real. It's not for the day. I ain't got it, but I will be right back because I'm going to get it. And when I get it, I'm going to bring
bring it to you. So that your faith would not be in me, but in God. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You will cast out devils. You will heal the sick. You will speak in tongues. Why are you against tongues? Why are you deeply embedded against speaking in tongues? Ha <laughs> ha, it shot. Why have you not experienced this by now? If I needed a glass of water, I would go find the water. I wouldn't just die of thirst. And I know water's everywhere. Y'all got water all around you. You're just going to die of thirst. Why have you not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit by now? Why are you embedded against speaking in tongues? I want it all. I don't care if it make me Baptocostal, Methocostal. I don't care what you call me. I'm going to get it all. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I don't care what you call me. Long as I got the power. Long as I got the power. That when I walk in the room, demons tremble. Uh, long as I got the power. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not limited to a denominational title or category. I am saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. I want that to be everybody's testimony. Open your mouth and say, I want it all. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Flowing from my heart. I keep hearing it. Are the issues of my heart. Ooh, flowing from my heart. Oh, yes, God. Are the issues, oh, Lord, of my heart. Yeah. Oh, flowing. God, I thank you. I thank you that you kept me through the storms of denominationalism. I thank you that you didn't let them kill me. You didn't let them destroy me. I'm grateful. <laughs> Hallelujah, God. When they tried to throw me under the bus and when they tried to trick me in their beds, when they tried to seduce me, you didn't let me get fooled. You kept me pure. When they offered me credentials for a small fee in exchange, you didn't let me get tricked. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. When they said my church would last six months, 51 years later, I'm still here. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, God. I'm grateful that you allowed me to preach across this nation and around the world in every denomination that there is. So God, I pray that tonight, what you have done for me, you will do for them. That God, you will open their hearts and open their understandings that this is for them. And those that have tasted of it will taste again. Those that have received will receive afresh. That there is nothing that you cannot do with us. So tonight, I thank you. Lift your hands and open your mouth. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. I accept him in my heart. I believe that he was raised from the dead. I receive him afresh as my personal Savior. Now tonight, Lord, 
I believe that it is your will for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I desire it all. I want every gift. I want signs. I want wonders. I want miracles. I want all the power. All the power that you promised. I want it in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I desire to have all of it. The word of knowledge. Say it out loud. The word of wisdom. Prophecy. Tongues. Interpretation of tongues. The gift of faith. Working of miracles, the gifts of healing, discernment of spirit, prophecy. I want it all. I want it all. I want to cast out devils. I want to heal the sick. I want to speak in new tongues. And I thank you that it is your will for me. Call your name. Call your name. To have it all. And I won't stop until I get it all. I won't stop until I get it all. I'll fast, I'll pray, I'll search, I'll go after, I'll read, I'll study, I'll get around others, I'll do everything I need to do that I might get it all. The length, the breadth, the depth. And the height. I want to be filled with all of the fullness of God. And everything else is secondary. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, clap your hands. Give the Lord praise. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Give him praise with your hands. Give him praise with your mouth. God, I thank you. I don't hear you. Open your mouth. What have I had to do a whole shot? Yes, God. Thank you, Father. God, I give you praise tonight. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to ask you to take your seat for just a moment. And we're going to do something called soaking. Just quiet music. Very quiet. I want you to play for me uh, that hymn, Sweet Holy Spirit. We're going to soak in his presence for just a moment. Because I don't want you to think that everything in the Holy Spirit is loud. Sometimes just sitting in the silence is more precious than the noise. So I just want you to be soaking. I want you to start worshiping right there in your seat. Open your mouth. Don't be afraid of this. I believe some incredible things are going to happen tonight. And I want you to just begin to talk to the Lord. God, I want it all. I want it all. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to just receive him right there where you are. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, we thank you. Flow through this room by your spirit. Flow through this room by your power. Flow through this room by your presence. Let it be more real than their own flesh. Hallelujah. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave.
Won't you stay right here with me? Oh, yeah, said I'm almost gonna keep on filling this with your love. Come on, come on, minister, let him minister to you. And for these blessings, oh, Shebana Rabbaya, Lord, we will lift our hearts in praise. Oh, yes, without a doubt, we will know. Oh, yes. We have been revived when we shall leave this place. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Move in the midst of us tonight. Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Heal sick bodies tonight. Heal sick bodies. Heal sick minds. In the name of Jesus. God, we give you glory. Fill us with love. Pour your spirit out. Break chains of bondage. Destroy the works of the devil in our lives. Break through every dark place that we may be in. In the name of Jesus. Lift those hands in his presence. He's ministering to you right now. He's ministering to you right now. I want you to embrace that. Embrace it. Soak in his presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And as you begin to sense his presence, I want you to ask him what you want. Tell him what you want. Ask him, what do you want me to do? Ask him, what do you want me to do? While you're moving in this way, ask me, ask, ask me what you want. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. Ask him, Holy Spirit, what would you have me to do? sickness, tell him, heal me. Heal me right now. If you have a habit you have not been successful in, tell him right now, break it. You are here now, Holy Spirit. Touch me. Touch my mind. Touch my life.
He's walking the aisles. He's walking in between the pews. And when you know he's present, talk to him. And let him talk back to you. Some of you will hear him like never before tonight. You will sense him as never before. He's real. He's not a ghost. He's God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And become comfortable in the soaking. It doesn't always have to be noisy. You don't always need music to be caught up in the presence of Holy Spirit. Elijah said, I thought I heard God when the wind blew, but it wasn't. I thought it was God when I saw the fire, but it wasn't. I peeped out again and I saw the earth quaking, but that wasn't him either. And then, a still, small voice. Tonight, your ear is opened. It will never be closed again. You will always be able to hear his voice from tonight. And if you ever get in a ball of confusion, sit in his presence quiet. And allow Holy Spirit to speak to you. More and more you will become accustomed. Until you get totally dependent on hearing that voice. Lord, we thank you. We thank you tonight for your fullness and your presence. Sickness is being dissolved in the name of Jesus. Because sickness cannot stay where his presence is. All he has to do is show up in the room and sickness has to go. Lord, we thank you tonight for your presence. Sweet Holy Spirit. I hear you weeping. I hear you crying out to God because he's touching you. You're sensing his presence. He's more real to you now than he's ever been before. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Heavenly Dove. Stay right here with us. Oh, yes. Filling us with your love. <laughs> and for these blessings, we will lift our hearts. In praise, Hallelujah. without a doubt, how know that I have been revived <laughs> when I shall leave. This place. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead and clap your hands and give him praise. Soaking. Soaking. Hallelujah. Without a doubt, we'll know. Come on. That we have been, we've been revived. Oh, when we shall leave mm -hmm. 
this place. Can you slip your hands up and say yes? Come on, lift those hands. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, say yes. Come on, sing it with me. Say yes. Oh, say yes. Yes. Come on. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Sing it from your spirit tonight. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yes, one more time. Yes, Lord. Come on, hands are up, hands are up. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, help me. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on. From your belly. From your belly. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, yes, oh yes, yes, oh God, oh God, yes, oh yes, my soul says yes, my soul says yes. I will, God, I will, I will. My soul says yes. Ooh, my soul says yes. Yes, sir, yes, sir. My soul says yes. Hallelujah. My soul says yes. Yes. Come on, come on. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Just wave your hands. Come on. Oh, yes, yes, wave at me, wave at me, yes, oh, yes, my soul says yes, hallelujah, my soul says yes, come on, yield, 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 yield now, my soul says yes, Yield to him, yield. Oh, my soul says yes. My soul says yes. My soul, my will, my heart, my mind. Oh, say yes, yes. Come on, I keep hearing it. Oh, yes. I hear it. Clap your hands. Come on. Oh, yes. I hear it. I hear it in the room tonight. I hear it. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Move tonight. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Listen to me carefully tonight. I'm praying even over you now. That what you have experienced will not let you sleep tonight. That you will wrestle in the spirit through the night. There is something that God has for each of you that you are so close to. There is something that is so real that is in this room right now. You have but a few more steps to go. And the spirit of the Lord is going to minister to you all through the night. This won't be a normal night of sleeping. 
It won't be a fight, but it'll be an encounter. Some will have a dream and a vision tonight. The lady that sang, would you stand on your feet, please, baby? There is such a oil on you. And I just want you to hear this real carefully by the Spirit of God. What God has for you may not be immediately where you are. But begin to search for it. Don't be afraid of God's presence. There are times when God is using you and you pull back. There are times when you are singing, you're ministering, and you get so caught up in the spirit, but you pull back, you come out. Don't be afraid of it. There is an oil on your life. You are more than a singer. Your singing is more than singing. Your singing is prophetic. You are a minstrel. You are a Levite. You minister in the presence of the Lord. And you bring messages from heaven to God's people. Don't be afraid of that. Find the books. Levites. Minstrels. Search, Google, between now and this time next year, you will be able to articulate exactly who you are. You are not just a singer. Oh, you can sing, but the oil that's on you is to change lives. People will begin to get healed while you sing. The next time that God opens that gate in the spirit, don't pull back. Go all the way in. Whatever happens, it's all right. Let God be glorified. You have come through a lot of storms. You've come through hurricanes, train wrecks. You've come through shipwrecks. You've come through enough. That now God can trust you to carry this oil. And this oil is not just for your church. It's for the body of Christ. I say, I'm going to use you. What I delivered you from, what I brought you out of, now is going to pay off. You say, God, why is this so hard? Why is this happening to me? He said, because I was getting the oil ready for your generation. When you minister to God the way you did tonight, people's hearts are touched. It's not just singing. It's coming from a well. You have tried God. He has tested you. And now he says, I can trust you. Dig into it. Put some time in it. Find out what you are supposed to be and be able to tell somebody. I'm not just a singer. I'm a prophetic minstrel. I am a Levite. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, pour your spirit out upon this woman. Pour your spirit out upon this woman in ways that she has never experienced before. Give her an unlimited dose of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. 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 I need somebody to holler with me. Hallelujah. I know we got to go. Let's get up out of here. Let's try. <laughs> Pass, I'm trying. Let's try. Let's try to go. Let's try to go. Oof. What happened to you tonight, mother? Something happened. Something happened really rich for you. I didn't want to. I didn't want to stop until I knew God had got you to a place that I saw Him all over you, and I knew He was dealing with you. 
and I'll hold a service for one person. When I see God moving on somebody, I'll hold a whole service. Because you don't know what that person has been through to get to that. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. your hands when that starts happening lift your hands when that starts happening learn to respond get with it don't sit there and watch it The Lord said, I'm walking among you. The Lord said, I'm walking among you. That's what he's saying to her to tell us. I'm walking among you. I'm walking among you. You have asked. You have prayed. You have cried. You have sought me out. And I have come, and I'm walking among you. Let us have it. Give it all to us. Give it all, mother. Give it all. Give it all. He said, I am God. God says, I am walking among you. Lift your hands, folks. In the New Testament, this is called tongues and interpretation of tongues. This is supposed to happen in our churches. This should be regular. It should be normal. This is prophecy in action. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Think it not strange that many of you will be used in days to come to speak a prophetic word. And someone else will interpret it. Don't think it to be strange. Expect it. Desire it. Ask for it. And I'll do it. I am still God. And I am still pouring out my spirit. On all flesh. So some of you have read Joel. But you have never experienced Joel. So tonight. I'm causing you to be open enough to experience. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Thank you, Lord. Do not reject me. Do not resist me. I will not harm you, neither will I hurt you. But I will cause you to walk in a new dimension. I will 
cause you to walk. Not that you know the way, but I will cause you to walk in new dimensions. Lord, we give you praise. Clap your hands tonight. Ooh. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, Tahana Hoshaba. Makishkato Rabahanda. I want you to bring an offering tonight. And I want the Lord to speak to you what this is of value to you. To know that you can be filled with the fullness of God. Not that you can pay for it, but what is the value to you? It's got to be more than $5, right? It's got to be more than $20. If you really believe that you could be filled with all of the fullness of God. And that that was your portion. In response, just out of gratitude. You would be generous. So tonight, I'm not going to give you an amount, but I want you to be generous. I'm going to ask you to be as generous as if someone had brought you a new car and it was sitting outside or had paid off your mortgage or had deposited $500,000 in your bank account. I want you to be that generous. I want you to be that thoughtful because what you have received tonight fullness of God is more valuable than any of those things. Come now, sir. And as you begin to come, just stand up on your feet. Just that sweet Holy Spirit again. Let's just do that again. I think that's where we are. Hallelujah. Just begin to come. If you're bringing your, your telephone, your, your device, just come and touch the container. Some of you can give 500. Some of you can give 1,000. Some of you can give 250. Some of you can give 100. Some of you can give 75, 50. But be generous. Open up your spirit. Because one of the things that happens in the fullness of God is generosity. Not only do you get the gifts, but you have a desire to give and see the kingdom move forward. If you can give a thousand, give a thousand. If you can give five thousand, do it. If you can give five hundred, do it. Tonight has been tremendous. Whatever your gift is, that it measure the same as your thankfulness for what God has spoken to you tonight. Stand on your feet and start walking this way. Come now. You don't have to wait on an usher. It is revival. We we do things different. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you. What is your name? Stop just a minute. What is your name? Gentle? Is that your real name? Wow. Is that your first name or your last name? What is your last name? Are you a pastor? What are you? Minister of music. Right here. Your hand, when I touched your hand, it is on fire. Your hand is on fire. Wow. Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet with the evidence of speaking in tongues? You have. I want you to do more speaking in tongues. There's a group of people around you that do not want you to succeed. There's a people, there's a group of people around you that are trying to push you away from the fire and the purity that is in you. And it is because of their jealousy of you, their envy of you. So the enemy is plotting, trying to set you up, open doors you shouldn't walk through, be in rooms you should never know exist. Because you're pure. The enemy seeks to make you not pure. But your hand is on fire. 
And the thing that you must begin to do more is pray in tongues. You got to pray more daily in the spirit. He said, if you will sit to the instrument and you begin to pray in the spirit, I will give you the lyrics, the music. I will give you the sound that I want to touch the world. Those people who are offering you this do not have it. And they are drawing from the wrong spirit. They are drawing from a worldly spirit. They are drawing from a carnality where the only outcome is wealth. But it destroys on the way. But your hand is on fire. Since you were in your mother's womb, God says, I've had my hand on you. And now is a time where I will birth through you a sound. A sound. Not just a song, but a sound. Sit in my presence. Sit at the instrument and pray in the spirit. More and more and more. And even when you come to prepare the aggregation of singers, pray in the spirit. More and more. And as you increase, as you exercise this gift, I will begin to use you prophetically. And you will release a sound that will heal the sick. You will release a sound that will bring young people to this church. I will use that sound. Because they are so attracted to music. They are so gullible to music. You don't have to play their music to get them here. You will play the sound I give you. And one by one by tens by twenty. I will shift the music in this house. And they will come. Not because of a program, not because of classes, but the sound. And I put it in your hands. There's a question around here about young people. It's the sound that they're looking for. And I will give you that sound. introduce them to the Holy Spirit I'm going to give you songs about the Spirit I'm going to give you lyrics that go beyond your theology go beyond your knowledge it will be birthed prophetically as you speak to me sit in front of the instrument and speak to me and I will speak back to you and you will put your hand to the instrument and a sound will come that you've never heard. You are good. The Lord says you're one of the best. But wait until they hear the sound that I release through you. And if you will be faithful, if you will be faithful, you will never want. You won't have to sign the contracts of the devil. I will make you to lie down in green pastures. I will refresh you and restore you and you will have want for nothing. I need you to produce my sound. There's a generation waiting while others are going after demonic, the Illuminati, I will give you the sound that will save their lives. Your hands are on fire for God. Stay pure to me. Stay faithful to me. It may be longer coming than what you expected or anticipated, but it, it will tarry. Your life will be saved. A 
while others are perishing. Because it's a fast money. It's a fast track. That is not the world I want you in. Father, we thank you. We bless this man's life. May the fire of the Holy Ghost be upon him for the rest of his life. May he never be ashamed of who you have made him to be. And I give you glory in Jesus' name. Whew. Amen. From your belly to the world. From your most innermost being to the world. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. To burn. Until the Lord calls you home. It will never go out. Thank you Father. Wow. Hallelujah. Has everybody given tonight? Thank you Father. Hallelujah. God is in this place. The glory of the Lord is in this place. I said the glory of the Lord is in this place. The glory of the Lord is in this place. The glory of the Lord is in this place. The glory of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Tomorrow at 12 noon, you don't want to miss the lesson. It's the 12 noon service that bills for the evening. Tomorrow night, yes, my love. Somebody say miracles, signs, and wonders. Say miracles, signs, and wonders. God said, if you don't believe in anything else, I'll send you a sign. And you're coming to my church. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, my God. Would you put your hands together for this gift? We'll talk after service. It's olden. Oh my God. Yes, Lord. How many years ago was that? It's about 20 years ago. It was at Camp Blanding. That was about 20 years ago. It, it was probably more like 10 because I had released a book. And when she talked to you about the book, Life Beyond Adversity. Yes. And you said, I need that lady. I need to talk to that lady. I still need this lady. <laughs> God ain't changed his mind. Father, we thank you that you never take it back. You don't take it back. There is something for us to do together. And we give you praise. That you will make it known unto us. But tonight you have shown us a sign. 
and we give you glory. In Jesus name. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Stand on your feet, everybody. Father, we give you praise. Come on, pastor. The glory of the Lord is in this place. I even hate to turn it back to you, but I got to. Father, we love you right now, God. Tonight, you will not rest. Remember tonight, you will wrestle. Even if you sleep, you will wake up. You will sleep, you will wake up. Have a piece of paper and a pen near your bed or a tape recorder. Because God is going to deal with each of you tonight. He said, I'm going to walk in your house and I'm going to visit with you. We give you praise. This baby said, Lord, you are welcome. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, thank him for it now. Come on, thank him for it now. Thank him for the midnight meditation. Thank him for the midnight breakthrough. Thank him for the midnight word. Thank him for the midnight adjustment. Thank him for the midnight miracle. In the name of Jesus. We release you tonight to be back at noon we release you tonight to be back tomorrow at 7 bring everyone you know that's in trouble that's infirm that's dealing with ailments sickness disease frustration anxiety get them here bring every youth Bring them here to receive what God is going to release in this house. We declare victory. We declare miracles. We declare signs. We declare wonders. We declare breakthrough. We declare baptism in the Holy Ghost. We receive it. In Jesus' name, in this last day, as he pours out his spirit, Holy 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 Spirit. Holy Spirit. Go forth. Bring them in. Encourage. Reach. Free. Pull. Hallelujah. Go forward. Sons and daughters. Go forward. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, go, go, <laughs> go, <laughs> go, 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 and it shall come to pass. God bless you. We love you tonight. In Jesus' name.